brother with my stuff from Wessex Glades in England. A um, bit of a different day to day. Um, little one's not very well, so I'm at home looking after her. Um, so, keep myself busy. Hmm. Just. I've had a go, okay? Big, big thing. That one goes on there like that. What do they call that? The initial loop, I suppose. Anyway. Whack the dirty great far still in, um, the Chris, she dug knives. Echo. <coughs> it's in there. But it's probably for about a 7mm, but it, it fits a 9 so they got nice lanyards and um, been wanting to do this for months. This this is the axe I got from the boot sale. I think it was about eight pounds. I've tidied up the handle, oiled it, um, sharpened it up a fair bit. Pretty good. It's quite a handy axe, but taking it out is a bit awkward because I don't have a mask. So that's what I'm going to start making. So if I sort of move the camera. And as I go, do a few bits of filming, you'll see how I approach it. It's pretty basic. Um, so, here we go then. Come over here, Scotty's little desk. So, all I've done initially, so I've got a big black pencil. I've just drawn a generous template around the outside. Plenty of room for stitches or rivets. All right, and then what I'm planning on is the strap will be mounted at the back here. Come over the top, that section. Come over the top, and clip on another piece that's that big anyway. So sort of like that to that section there, up to there. Should be able to see that. And then just fill in the gaps where the head was. So plenty of room, plenty of space. And I'm not trying to make it too elegant. I'm just trying to get it done. See so in a bit. I've cut it. Okay, I'll come back. Now what I'm going to do is try and allow for the back to have, or the front, whichever, to have a different shape on it to come up a, to allow that length there to have enough strap so I might actually not have a matched front and back but when you're trying to get a nice pair in terms of the front and back make sure when you use this as a template you put it suede side to suede side if that makes any sense to you so if I put it like that I can get an extra bit of length to make sure the strap is plenty long enough so I can draw that and give myself a nice amount of room there. There's my axe, and that's going to creep up the back somewhere along the line. So the strap gets some room to come over the top. I have left it plenty long enough, but I just like playing with designs as I go. And I've just had a little experiment, and yes, this is plenty sharp enough to do what I want to do. The slight overlaps of the back and the front. I'm literally using the Echo to trim it. Okay. So 
wicked little knife. Sheepdog knives. It's there, 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 and there. And then flip it over and just to mismatch bits, just make sure it's all married up. A little bit there. Offer up the head, hold it down, perch that on there, and then work out where I'm going to put the holes for my little rivets. What I'm going to do is just use a very small headed punch and just dot out where I want it to go. that's here I'll, I'll move the head up because that's the distance that you need between the rivets to allow the thing to get in in the first time you know it's all well and good doing it but it's narrower there than it is at the, the bit at this end so that would still allow good passion would still allow the head to come in down and one in the middle there okay so that's the locations of the rivets I've got my rivets out and now what I'm going to use are my pitch working tools that one there so just tidy all this up here a minute before I go on wax some holes in. All this is, those are aware of it, is like a little forked chisel. And what I'm doing is, is I'm going along the very edge like that. So if I go to macro, zoop, focus, there's a the chisel. So I'm just going along the very edge, taking that square edge, which would allow my edge working tool later to make it rounded on the outside. You'll see later. But what we're doing now is just tidy all these up. fun in here. If you had a big punch you could always do a nice radius in there. I'll just scoop it out. Because 
or the, it's like doing a, a a blade that goes along and then the handle if you make it really square really square shoulders you actually make weak points so i've actually gone into there and rounded that internal corner I just rounded it off Anyway, I'm not where how can I put it? I'm not saddler level on lever work yet. Don't think I'll ever will. But this stage really allows the edge profiling to catch up with itself later on. That goes there. That goes there. Now because these are quite dry, now I'm going to wet it down a minute and then do a bit of forming whilst it's wet, supple and get all these twists out of it. So the object of that was to go all the way through the first layer and mark the second layer. Don't go all the way through both with a punch like that because it would make the front holes really big and stretched. So all I'm trying to do is just mark the second layer and then go through so you've only gone down into the punch that much each time. So now they're marked out. You almost just take it out of your hand. I mean, I'm almost through there. But there's the punch, I'm doing this into wood as opposed to when I was doing my maker's mark which went on the metal. Okay, welcome back. So now we've got front and back punched through and they all line up. Maker mark on. Now, if you're really clever, you'll get all the snaps and links done for the strap before you start doing all the wet form. But I need to know what I'm doing. So I'm probably going to do it this way round. So I'm going to put all the rivets in. And then when I punch through, I'll put a piece of wood in the, actually in the sheaf to punch this hole here for the snap. If you're really organised and you're an expert, you'll know where to put it and you'll work out where the thing's going to be anyway. But I plod. I, I know if I put them in there, I can wet form this and I'll know what the shape will be. So I'm going to install all these rivets and then slide that in. I'm going to put some shrink wrap clean film, we call that in England, cellophane, around the head of the axe. So when it's in there, it's not going to get too rusty. In the hour, it'll be drying out. So I'm going to start whacking some rivets in there in a minute. Now, the, the rivets I'm using, very, very basic, tiny weeny little things like that, and each one will have its die around the right way and you actually strike through onto something hard I just got an old V block I got from a yard cell so that, that's acting as an anvil for me that was educating 
in this small tiny pack there's actually two sizes so I've got to marry up the correct three sizes big back ends with short stumps big back ends with long stumps okie dokie One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So six. So I'll do I'll do big ones up there, and then little ones. Big ones, little ones. So big one next. That's interesting. You buy a pack of rivets, and there's three different sizes in there. Okay. There's big. It goes there. Rounded size I put on my dished anvil. I whack that there like right. Bang bang. Bang bang. Four three. Just enough room to get that little bleeder through. Yeah, that one. A uh, rinky dink. Oh, that's quite sweet having two different sizes. Bang, bang. That will never come. We'll get there. Inky dink. Tiny weenie. So on and so forth. Okay, so what's that forming in there with cellophane on? I'm going to cut a strap out of this piece and then measure up from there two rivets around and a popper about there. So from that flap tongue there and the back of the head there, over the top of the handle here down to that. So let's leave that to dry. Concentrate on cutting as straight a piece as I can. So I'll get a ruler and a pencil and cut a nice big straight strap. Right, so for cutting the strap, to get that incredibly even width, I didn't use a strap cutter. I just cut down both sides of the ruler. Now you can buy um, belt end punch rounded things, but if you've got an old bowl gouge like for wood turning, you can just do that, or you just get a pair of scissors. And you go like this. Go like this. And surprise, surprise, it's pretty even. So now what I'm going to do is wet that because he's got a real twist. I'll wet that. Edges again. And what I've got to do is do the edges on this because once it's on that, it'll be hard to do it. So I'll do the proper edges on there. Give me some room. So I used a V in there first. And 
edges, finish up the edges. So what I'm doing now is I'm offering up the back strap to get the best fit whilst I snap the tripod. For that to go in there. So I can go a little bit higher with the sheath or a mask. That's up. About there. So it'll be a popper or a snap around there. We'll do that later. But what I want to get is that neat on the back of there. So I've offered it all up. So I know it's going to fit on the front and I can get two rivets in there and it all lines up with the, the back of the shape here. Could go that way a little bit more. That's lovely. So that's out of the way. That's held on. That's come out, and that's where it is. So straighten it up, same again, get my punch, punch through the first layer and mark the second. This is where, you, if you can, appreciate how big the rivet's going to be, and try and get a nice even radius from the outside of the strap edge, which is sort of this piece here. And where the rivet will be so a nice position will be about there so as the rivet comes across too close it, it, it'll actually look unattractive so I'll put one there and then one there hammer so I'm not necessarily going through the second layer as long as I mark it one there and again, a nice attractive position for that would be there. This is where you've got to be careful that if you want to make it strong, you get the holes close together. Well, the holes could be close together, but by the time you put the heads on, they look crowded. So, space is just as important as strength. Okay, so don't don't cramp these too close up there and don't try and oh I'll go for free and make it super strong. Okay, you you just look crowded. So mark the second layer. Now go through with that. Surprise my computer's still running with all these impacts. So Two rivets. Yeah, right. Well, this is the uh, precise technique, but what my eye find is quite good for finding where the holes are the right place, and you get both marked. Is that you put the tool in the thing, pull on it, get that in, pull on it, get that down. That's where I want it. Through the second, sorry, through the first, mark the second. And you won't ruin the tip of that. So I've marked it just as it starts sort of bearing down onto there. I've stopped. I haven't gone all the way through the lever. Now, what I'll do is I'll put something like that and a piece of metal or something like that. So I'm going to hit lever again. Not all the way through the lever, so I exactly ruined that cutter. We just put a piece of wood in. Now that should be the right place. 
for the right tension for that head. All I've got to do now is put a snap on. Okay. So, in goes the head. Over goes the strap. That's a lot safer. That's it's all right, isn't it? So, an axe mask or sheath, down and dirty, took me what? Hour and ten minutes, hour and a quarter. And that's, I say, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I'm more than happy now to put that in my pack. So, thanks for joining me again. Just basically a Stanley knife set of punches with the right dies and knowing when to use a block of wood or an anvil at the right time. Measure and I, I'd say that the biggest thing is to cut a generous piece to start with because you probably need a little bit more room than you would think for the rivets. Okay? So cut bigger, you can always trim it down. Thanks John again. It's got nice plates.